<sighs> hey guys, it's 2017 and you may have noticed that I haven't been putting out too many videos lately and one of the reasons is because I've been working on my big boat. I didn't want to bother you guys with all the technical nonsense and the mechanical uh, issues that I've been running into. Uh, so again, I haven't been putting out too many videos and I haven't been fishing very much so there hasn't been too much content. However, all my hard work is starting to pay off and I'm hoping that 2017 is going to uh, bring some exciting stuff that I can share with you. Uh, kind of like this right here. This is something I haven't been able to do for a very long time. I can put that key in to my boat. Whew. It's a little cold out, but... Uh, <laughs> You hear that? That's pretty cool, huh? Actually, both of the motors are running. And, um, very shortly I'm going to be going on my maiden voyage, uh, hopefully with some of the guys that have helped make this happen. <sighs> so I've got that to look forward to. Um, however, there has been a lot of steps to get to this point. So right now I'm just going to put some of these steps together for you in a short video in what I call a quick boat update. They're always a quick boat update and they're always like 15 minutes long. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, uh, check out some of the things that it's taken to get to this point. Well, you guys might remember my old engines, these cruddy, horrible looking things that I thought at one time I would actually be able to get to run. But uh, in previous episodes, I pulled these engines and I painted the gook that was underneath it. It was pretty gross. Not after I was done, it was beautiful. Uh, but you see here, these are the couplers that were on the propeller shafts. Those had to go. Not just because they were old, but because the new ones matched the couplers that were on the new motors, transmissions, and yada yada yada. Anyways, I had to cut them off. And doing that proved to be quite a task. I emitted a whole bunch from this sped up scene right here of me trying desperately to get these things off without marring the propeller shafts. It took some doing. Chiseling and cutting and, and working the coupler into two pieces. You can see me wiggling them back and forth right here. This was actually one of the last things that I had to do before I would be ready to put the new motors in. You can see here the coupler that came with the motors. This part goes on to the propeller shaft and there was another part that was already on the transmissions. And that's where everything kind of links up. This was an important step and I'm glad I got it done before the motors got in. This is Mike. Mike helped me put these motors in. I think I covered that in a previous episode. And what you see me doing here is working on the engine mounts. These are the mounts that came with this motor transmission setup. I was trying in vain in this scene to get the motor in a proper position so that the two couplers would line up. The one that you just saw me install and the one that was on the transmission. But back to that in a second. Here I'm building a frame that will be a support for the motor and transmissions. Because both of them weigh, I don't know, about 800 pounds, I needed something that was going to take the weight of the engine so that I could manipulate it back and forth, up and down, in slight increments. It was very difficult to slide them around with all that weight sitting on the stringers. Nope, a little too tight there, Marty. 
<laughs> no worries, that's an easy fix. There you go. With this contraption in place, my hope was that I would be able to use this come along that I got from my buddy Chris. The same guy who found the motors. The same guy who lent me a trailer so I could get said motors to this boat. Anyways, uh, with this tool of his, I was going to lift the motors ever so slightly just to get most of the weight off of the stringers. And then with this little pry bar here, I can easily nudge it to where its final home had to be. However, my worry was that these mounts that came with the motors weren't going to work because they were a little bit crooked. So I went to Bullfrog Creek Marine to see my friend Mark to ask what his opinion was. I've shown Mark in one of my videos before and he is a wonderful wealth of knowledge. Not quick to sell you stuff, but quick to help you. Men like him are rare to find in this world. We're putting the same engines back in, so none of that adjustment should change. Uh, probably wouldn't be a bad idea to break them loose, just so that if you do have to adjust them, you can. But keep them in the same position. But keep them in the same position. No, no. I mean, everything being bolted up is going to keep this from shifting anyway. This bolt is just going to anchor down. This bolt right here is anchoring most of everything down, so now you're good. Okay. With Mark's approval, and even one of his uh, repair guys out back taking a look at my engine mounts, the old ones, I decided to go ahead and proceed with making them all nice and pretty and using them instead of the mounts that I got with the new motors. It was definitely nice to have a professional opinion, though. I'll tell you what. Here I am at my house, which I have since gotten rid of, getting rid of most of the surface rust that was on the mounts. And then I took them to my friend Chris's place. Not, no, that's Bayard, my dog. Chris is uh, my buddy who's been in a bunch of my videos. He has a sandblasting booth and helped me make them all pretty like you see here. And then I realized that I was going to have to make a major modification to these motor mounts. And believe me, this did not come without some serious thought. But I decided to cut about three quarters of an inch off of the bottom of the mounts, the front motor mounts at least, because I needed to change the angle of the new motor and transmissions so they would line up with the propeller shaft. This is a bit of a momentous occasion. I've got the mounts finally figured out after uh, manipulating those front ones. You can see them sitting there on the stringer, cut down. With those low enough, I was able to align the, the coupler on the propeller shaft with the coupler on the transmission. And they have to be so tight that you have to use a feeler gauge to make sure that the space around is all the same. And I finally got it to where the top, bottom, left and right are all the same. So the only thing left to really do is drill some holes, take that lag and put them through the mounts and this motor will be mounted. <laughs> I can't believe it. For me, I mean, a uh, self-taught kind of guy, that's uh, pretty much a big deal. Of course, when that one's done, we get to do it all over again. <laughs> you can see the mounts that came with that motor are not that good. They're sitting cattywampus. If you can see, this pivots this way, but it does not pivot that way. That's what I need. Otherwise, like you can see on the tranny mount here, 
you see that big space in the back that's no good because when you put pressure on it even if I shimmed this I'm afraid that the bolt would eventually wear its way through the bushing inside that mount so we're going to replace it the new mounts with the old mounts which are actually correct for this application had I known this from the beginning I could have made my job a lot easier but hey I'm learning as I go that's what kind of held me up for a while and that's why this the old mounts had to replace them live and learn but eventually well let me just say I'm a lot closer now to driving this boat than I was just a short while ago You know, let me also comment on the fact that doing this by myself would have been next to impossible, um, at least in any kind of decent time frame. Relying on friends and having people helping me has really made a reality out of this situation. There's no other way I could have done it. I truly am grateful for all the people that have been involved with helping me, whether it's physically coming here to the boat and help me do this, or just giving me support. I appreciate all those efforts. Getting those engines mounted was definitely a challenge, but it wasn't the last one that I faced uh, in order to get to this point. However, there is an awful lot uh, to fit into just one video, so I'm going to save that for the next quick boat update. Until then, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.